What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome back to the channel. November 10th, PlayStation Pro will be dropping. I know a lot of people out there are excited about it. I got an older brother who's been holding off from buying the PlayStation 4 until the PlayStation Pro actually was going to be coming out. So he's really, really excited about it. I'm actually on the fence about it. And honestly, the PlayStation meeting kind of left a lot more questions than they left answers with me. And this article I came across really gave me a lot more answers and really helped me understand exactly what the PlayStation Pro can mean for me. Because not everybody is going to be going out and buying new TVs uh, and, and really experiencing these things in 4K. A lot of people have really nice TVs at home right now. And for those people, the question remains, what can the PlayStation Pro do for me? I'll drop a link in the description. Here's how the new PlayStation 4 Pro can make all your games look more gorgeous even if you don't own a 4K TV. That's the caveat guys. That's what they didn't talk about at the PlayStation meeting. When it comes to PlayStation 4, you got a few options if you're in the market. You could buy the original PlayStation, the new slimmer version of the original, or the similarly new, larger, more powerful PlayStation 4 Pro. That's a lot of PlayStations. Thankfully, you only need to know about two of them. That's because the original PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Slim are the same console with different exteriors. One's a bit slimmer, a bit rounder, but they're identical on the inside and that's what counts, right? When it comes to the PlayStation 4 Pro, it's more powerful than the other two PlayStation 4 consoles, yes, but the big selling point is being able to produce both games and movies in 4K. You know 4K, right? That's the successor to high definition in terms of resolution. It's the next step in making TVs, movies, and games look better than ever. There's only one downside. You need to own a 4K TV to take advantage of the higher resolution. And 4K TVs aren't cheap. You're looking at $800 to $1,000 at least, and that's on the low side of things. Except in this case with PlayStation 4 Pro. Even folks with standard high def TVs, most people, will get even prettier games than usual. There's a simple reason for that. Game developers can use the PlayStation 4 Pro's increased power for other stuff. What kind of stuff? Here's a technical explanation care of the PlayStation Pro FAQ that Sony recently published. Quote, depending on how the developer chooses to use the increased processing power, games with PlayStation 4 Pro support are able to render higher and more consistent frame rates, increased environmental and character model detail, improved overall visual quality, and other related visual enhancements, end quote. Simply put, the power can be used for other things, and many of those things have a major impact. Being able to lock the frame rate of a game, the number of image frames that a game is able to render per second is really meaningful. Ever play a game and when a lot of stuff is happening on the screen the game slows down? That's because it's dropping frames. The hardware is having a hard time processing all the information on the screen and so it compensates by pulling away processing horsepower from other stuff like how many frames are being processed on screen per second for instance. With the PlayStation 4 Pro, there's more than enough power to go around. But wait, there's more. A variety of games on the PlayStation 4, as pretty as they are, don't get rendered in 1080p. That's true HD. Instead, they're slightly smaller, think 900p. The PlayStation 4 upscales the games to 1080p instead of them being produced in native 1080p. Essentially, the image is stretched as a result. Not on the PlayStation 4 Pro though. It can take your close but not quite HD game and make sure it's running in 1080p. The PlayStation Pro launches on November 10th and costs $400 and it doesn't come with a 4K TV. This kind of information is what we really needed uh, the guys on stage, Mark Cerny, to actually convey to us. They spent a lot of time on that stage talking about 4K resolution and they really didn't convey to us in a meaningful way what PlayStation 4 Pro will do for you right now if you don't have the extra thousand or two or three thousand to throw away and, and basically get a whole new TV to complement the system. This information is very, very meaningful for someone looking for the best PlayStation experience they can get who might not want to buy a 4K TV. I'm actually considering it now, buying a 4K TV so I can experience this thing in full 4K resolution and high dynamic range, uh, and, and I'm looking forward to it, but until that day, at least I'll know that my PlayStation 4 Pro will be able to give me the best possible experience on a 60 inch smart TV that's 1080p. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. Does the PlayStation 4 Pro need to do more for gamers not willing to buy 4K? Should they focus more on frame rate than resolution? Let me know what you think below. Be sure to give a thumbs up, show support for the channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and tell all your friends about me. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.